Okay, so um, yeah, this is about Jupyter Notebooks. Um, let's see. I've only got the projector screen. Okay, so, um, super large text. Uh, can I? Yeah. Okay, so I just, uh, just I wanted to do a little fun introduction. So I, I'm, I just want to uh, talk about my first experience programming, which is when I was, uh, my birthday when I was seven years old, I came downstairs in my pajamas and I found a BBC Beam computer. I don't know if any of you know about these computers. This is way back in the 80s. Um, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is like, the, you know, I kind of fell in love with programming at that time and um, it kind of be became a huge part of my life and like, why? It was, so I came down in the morning, and there, were, there it was, uh, sitting in the middle of the room. My, my father had left it there the night before, and uh, plugged it into the TV. Whoop. So yeah, we had a color TV back in those days, like, which, you know, uh, most people had, did have color TVs by, by then. Uh, that's a mechanical keyboard. That's what it looked like. Let me take it out. Yeah. So the the reason why I was uh, kind of in awe with this thing was that um, the my my father had written a program on it. And this was like my first encounter with the computer, and that, like straight away I could see a little program. And uh, so he he left the program on the screen, just like press press enter, like press this button, a little note there. So I pressed it, and um, I I remember it like vividly, like I, even it had like a mistake that the uh, I'll show you because um, so this is what I saw when I was seven years old, right? So um, and like you can even see the program at the end, and it's like so it had like uh, just saying happy birthday. But the reason why that's like super uh, was super interesting for me, and why I fell in love with this pro with programming, and why I'm giving this talk, is because um, this is like the the joy of programming. So that you can like have a power over a machine. Um, yes. Yeah, so so that's the thing about this machine was it booted straight into a basic interpreter. Like, like, or maybe you'd have to like write basic, and then like, so you could like start writing programs straight away. And uh, a generation of kids grew up with computers like this, but these days you don't really have it. So like, you know, seven years old, and I, I could, I could like change a program. Yeah, and we, and we had a fun, and uh, and the reason why it's fun, and the reason why I think a lot of you. Uh, like programming is because you get this feeling that you can you can like change the world, like you you've got a tool like you can run a computer science any computer science experiment on this on on any on like most computers you can you you can uh, do amazing stuff and you don't need like millions of dollars to do it or like an army or or anything like. So yeah, this, this for me is the joy of programming. So two to the five years later, <laughs> we got Jupyter, and this brings back like like yeah. So Python for me was like it really brought me back to that that feeling, you know, that that suddenly like programming was easy again. You didn't have to worry about like huge long compile times. You could like you do stuff and just see the results straight away, it's, uh, especially IPython. So you got the you got the regular Python interpreter, and then you got IPython, and and the extension for that is Jupyter. So um, yeah, so this actually, in fact, uh, I don't know if people who use Jupyter will probably recognize. So this is actually a, a Jupyter notebook, rendered as a as a slide talk. And uh, so, I should not get ahead of myself. 
Yeah, so um, I was saying like, yeah, it said that. Yeah, so a lot of people, a lot of I think uh, a lot of people are scared of programming. I think it's like really, really hard. And I don't think that's I think that's good. I think programming should be easy, and and everyone should be able to have power over a machine. I think Jupyter um, is a more accessible way of programming. Yeah, I'm gonna skip that. So. Okay, so it, in Jupyter, for the people who haven't used it, um, you have notebooks. And the idea of a notebook is not really a new thing. Uh, the, I think the first one's like in Mathematica, that you could, you could um, experiment in code. Like, you could r try something out and see what results you got, and then like go back and change it and run it again until you got something that made sense. So, so the idea of a notebook is it's like a document of of your program and, and your ideas and uh, the results of trying things out. So, you, you, uh, Jupyter notebooks, you got text. Uh, you can put charts. You can put equations like like I had before, where it's like the latex equation, latex. Sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's like the, the fanciest uh, software notebook. You can get, I think, and and the architecture is that uh, Jupyter sets up a a small web server, and usually, often you run it locally, so you run it on your machine, and um, what happens is that Jupyter uh, runs a Python kernel on that, oh, Python kernels on that uh, web server, on the server, and then like so, uh, in your browser, your uh, you're looking at the notebook, which is uh, rendered by Jupyter, and then uh, your your commands are sent to the kernel to be run, and then the results come back to the the client. Yep. And it's it stand it originally stood for well, it still I guess stands for Julia, Python, and R. So this um, it's definitely got a, like a data science background. Scientific background, but it, but these days it supports many other languages. Okay, so oh yeah, whoops, sorry about that. Um, ooh, what happened? Yeah, so the the interface is is of Jupyter is uh, you see cells. Uh, if I like, I think I could highlight one. So this is this is a cell, right? So th this um, this slideshow is a Jupyter notebook, and so I can actually like I can add I can edit it on the fly. So this is a cell, and this is what you get in in uh, Jupyter. Um, yep. Um, so this this is a text cell, uh, and this has got code in it. So. Um, this one I wrote a little. So th this is actually runnable. Um, sorry about the color scheme. So uh, I'm going to say hello to track two. Whoop! Terrible typing, but like okay. So it's like similar to my seven-year-old uh, program, seventh birthday program. This is. Uh, uh, similar thing in in Python, and this is a yeah. This is actually running this Python program on the kernel and then sending the results back to your client so that you can you can see what happened. Yeah, as I explained, is everyone following so far? Okay, great. Wait. Yeah. So um, yeah, for installation, uh, I usually just pip install it into a virtual environment. I'm not going to go really into this in the talk because I think uh, um, everyone here should be familiar with pip or some way of installing software. So yeah, um, an in interesting thing for me lately has been running Jupyter on Termux on Android. 
uh, and this is like really intriguing for me because this uh, is a way that I can write and run my own programs on an Android device without having to write an app, right? I can just like, as if it were, you know, I think of something and I can just code it up as a script and uh, see what the result would be, right? So it's, I don't know, super geeky, but that's what I kind of like to do. And yeah, and I even managed to install it on this watch, right? So this is an Android, full like uh, Android watch. This is like kind of uh, interesting tech from China now. So I could run Jupyter and Jupyter Lab on this watch. And, and that's interesting because um, Termux, uh, so, so this is like completely separate to Python, but Termux is an app that gives you like some access to the internals, like the, the features of an Android device, like I can take photos, I can get the location, I can uh, use text-to-speech, so I can speak out like notifications, I can show notifications on the screen and things like that. So it's interesting to me to have some way to play around and like write scripts that like f might, for example, look where I am, see if, like, let's say, for example, like, I've gone to some shop, and then like, in the script it's got some data that, okay, when you're in that shop, tell Mike to remember to buy some cheese or whatever, right? So that's, but I think like, um, yeah, I guess it's just like a hack, you know, like being interested in hacking, right? So overview of a basic Jupyter notebook. I hope I got enough screen estate. So I'm gonna, this way I like drop out of the slideshow. So this is my presentation as a, this is what you'd normally see in a Jupyter notebook. Whoop, there we go. So, um, uh, this is uh, your toolbar your uh, menu, so uh, what's interesting here? Uh, probably uh, the help is quite interesting. So, oh, you can't really read it. But yeah, Jupyter is pretty helpful to uh, use. So um, a good place to uh, start getting familiar is like learn the keyboard shortcuts, because they're a little bit tricky, because um, it's one of those interfaces that does so, does so much that uh, you kind of want to, like the, it's a complicated interface, you can like kind of, I mean what, what, I want, what I'm getting at is like if you can edit things or you can run them. And, you, and so when I run this, like I don't just print, press enter because enter just does a new line, so I press control enter run it, right? And uh, control enter, like, so there's these three, like, there's control enter, it runs it, and then it goes to the next cell, and then I think there's shift enter, is you run it, and then you, then it adds a new cell, and then there's alt enter or something, and it just runs it and stays in the same cell. So that's useful for, like, let's say you're, you're, you keep changing things and trying out um, some change to a parameter or something, then you want to keep staying with the same code. I should. Now, yeah, so this, when you, when you start a Jupyter notebook, then you see this home screen. <laughs> I'm gonna have to stretch. So uh, this uh, is a way to organize your, uh, the, the folder that you started Jupyter from. Um, so in this, you can do things like, uh, you can start a notebook, uh, like the one I was just showing before. Uh, you can write a text file. So you, this is, allows you to, you can kind of use this as an IDE. So uh, like a basic kind of IDE. So you can write a text file, a Python file, write some code in it, like, just like you would in a regular IDE. Uh, you can also um, write, make a folder to organize your stuff. And you can also just uh, start a terminal. So I can, so from the browser, I can do a, like, do a regular terminal. And it's picking up my uh, shell, which is C shell. Go back. So, uh, 
Yeah, so here's a, whoops. Here's a, uh, a text file, Python file, which is hello world, which I'll show later. I mean, you can see what it does, but. Uh, where am I? Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then um, inside your notebook, so if we create a notebook, then, so each of the cells has a cell type. This cell has a type of markdown. Uh, if I change it to code, then it's going to interpret it as if it were Python code, but it doesn't make any sense. So, uh, and there, there are shortcuts for um, setting a cell type. So you uh, press M for a markdown cell. And then you've got um, magic. So magic is this, um, like, kind of, let's say it's like reserved words, or not, no, it's, if they start with a percent, then uh, it will, it's, it's, it's giving you extra features that are kind of like magical features in uh, Jupyter Magical in that they're kind of doing something, but changing something behind the scenes so that uh, you, can, you can do some stuff. So these are quite interesting. Uh, if you uh, can do this as a... Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. So, so LS Magic shows you what uh, magical incantations you have. So this uh, LS magic here. So I don't know all of all of these because it's quite a lot. Um, but um, interesting ones, which I will show, is like so matplotlib. Um, so I don't know if you know matplotlib, but it, uh, it, it's a library that allows you to easily make uh, charts and images. Um, that is a kind of default. Um, let's say image uh, image. It's, is the default for adding charting and image functionality into Jupyter. Um, so yeah, we can actually show it. Um, or yeah, we'll come back to that. So um, matplotlib is the standard one. Um, bokeh is good. Uh, bokeh is uh, a another. Uh, Add-on to Jupyter, like well, there's a there's a kind of uh, extension to use Bokeh and and uh, MPLD3 that gives kind of interactive charts, so you can zoom in and out and stuff. And Bokeh also uses that. And there's Plotly, which I didn't try; it's uh, cost money, but it's supposed to be good. So this is let's say uh, so this is an example from the Matplotlib gallery of uh, just doing a simple chart. Um, so I'm not going to go through the code, but uh, except to point out like that you got this magic at the start. So uh, percent matplotlib inline tells Jupyter that um, if, so when you execute, sorry, when you execute, a, when you run a cell, then the last thing that gets evaluated Jupyter takes that as um, something to show, right? So if that thing happens to be an object which represents an image, then uh, normally you would just get like uh, the, the angle brackets, blah, 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 like ob image object or whatever. But if you've uh, done the magic for a matplotlib, then if it sees, oh, it's like, a, it's like um, some matplotlib object from, for some chart, then it will show that in line into the the output of the cell. So this is awesome because uh, this is how uh, you can show um, charts. To, you can chart your results. So it's this line that shows, like, returns that object, and then get, that will um, get shown in the in the uh, browser. Yeah. Then you've got, but this is not like an interactable chart, and he doesn't do anything. So then you've got, uh, 
This is a bokeh example. Um, I can, if I, I can run it again, so it should show you that it really is like evaluating it. I'm sure it'll crash now or something. Ooh, yeah, probably. <laughs> It uh, allows you to uh, interact with the chart, so you can can zoom in. You can like uh, you have tools to zoom in and out, and to um, to select areas and things like that. Wow, it's taking a long time. What's happening? It's doing it. Oh, actually, that's a good point. I can I can show you this, which is. I can interrupt the kernel, right? So I can stop what the kernel was doing if it got carried away, which is useful. So, so yeah, so the, um, you can restart a kernel. Uh, can just, you can just try. Yeah, OK, so great. So something went wrong, I don't know what. And I can restart the kernel from afar, which is pretty handy, like if you got like into an infinite loop or something. But OK, so here's Bokeh, and you can uh, pan. You can get it. Drag and zoom. Wait. Yeah, same as my, touchpad not working or something. But okay, take my word for it. Like you can, you can interact with it. You can uh, um, zoom in and like uh, see values and things like that, which is kind of handy for exploring data. Oh, and okay, so then here's another interesting one is you can run a regular command in the shell. So just prepend an exclamation mark and you can uh, run some command that you would, as if it were on the command line. But the interesting thing is that um, when you do that, it returns you a Python, a list of strings, right? So that's really handy, right? So, um, I've actually heard of uh, some pe some people would, like hardcore IPython users would set IPython as their regular shell because you could do similar kind of things in IPython. Um, yeah, so it's, it's because you've got like if you've got full access to the um, to like Bash or something, then put, you know being able to put Python on top of that like. Let's you, let's you more if you're you're always writing. I'm better in Python than I am in Bash by far, you know. So it's like handy for if you want to do some kind of shell scripting or an alternative to that. And uh, you can also from your notebook you can run another Python file. So that hello world uh, file that I, I showed before. Oops, this is two slides merged together. Oops, so ignore this. So that hello world, um, I can run it, and then uh, it will show the output of that program, right? Um, so then, uh, then there's this rise extension, which I used to create this simple presentation. So uh, rise is is basically just um, taking your cells and um, kind of like making them big. So what, what happens with rice is you get this extra in here, cell toolbar, uh, what is it, slideshow, right? I can barely read it. So in there, if you, uh, you can turn on this extra toolbar, and then each cell, you can say what kind of uh, what kind of slide it is. So this one will be a new slide because they merged together. This is a fragment. So now, if I ran it, 
whoops, to be out of the cell. Yeah. So now they they used to they were t stuck together. Now they're like I separate them. So I think that's really awesome for like doing a talk at PyCon because like being able to do that from a, a Jupyter notebook and having that that full integration between your slides and the Jupyter notebook is like you can run programs and uh, see your results. So, like, yeah. So um, how much time do I have left? Twenty minutes more. 12 minutes, okay. So, I'm gonna, that's kind of the end of my intro talk. Whoa, whoa, there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna come out of this. So that's Jupyter Notebook, right? And I'm gonna go back to my I'm just going back to my, oh, I can show you, terminal. Whoa, very big. So uh, very recent, well, not, like within, I think like the last year it's become big is um, Jupyter Lab. So Jupyter Lab builds again on top of uh, Jupyter Notebook. Right. Now it's gone. I'm just going to run it. Ooh. I'm typing Jupyter Lab. It should. OK, so this is Jupyter Lab. So there's my um, same Jupyter Notebook presentation. Ah. Yeah. Right, but Jupyter Lab is adding some more stuff on top of this. So, I uh, think the main thing is, uh, well, you've got your uh, list of files at the side here. So, uh, this is starting to resemble a lot more like an IDE. And uh, so if I go to the home, ah. oh. Mm. New. No. Yeah, it seems something wrong with my <laughs> touchpad. Okay, well, um, to yeah, so you see this is a tabbed interface. So you can have multiple notebooks running. You can have a mix of notebooks and your Python text files. You can split the view so that you can have, say, like uh, your Python file at the top and uh, a notebook underneath. Uh, you can um, also split out cells for view. So there's a way, let's say um, you've made like one of these charts. Uh, whoop. So like that thing, I could maybe. Uh, what is it? Create new view for output. And then you get like, okay, so that works. So like, you get an output view as another tab. Now the interesting thing about that is uh, you can have set that aside and then you can, if you change the code that generated that in that cell, then this is updated. So that's a nice way to um, see those updates basically. Uh, what else? Um, oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, Jupyter and Jupyter Lab. So, um, they're kind of becoming a platform in their own right. I think uh, with the um, extensions that are available for them, um, but it's still growing. But I, I always feel like there's lots of stuff happening. Um, yeah, and. Going back to the beginning of my talk, like this is interesting for me because it's a very f uh, f tight feedback loop uh, way to um, experiment, like experimental coding, trying out. Uh, like if you want to say try out an API, then it's a good way of doing it. 
um, and you get to keep your results. So I used, to, I used to use IPython and then kind of rely on the history of IPython. So like you, you, you'd, you'd experiment and write some code to like fix some data, say. Change some data and then like the next day you need to run it again. So then you end up going back and like like up 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 in the history to find out oh, oh, oh which one which and then you've got like different versions of it so you have to, like which one works oh my god like but this way you can keep it nice and tidy in a notebook so it enables that uh, kind of workflow that um, we just trying things out yeah uh, I think I'm coming to the end of my talk so are there any questions any questions. Oh, um, I would, I did, I think I said in, like, I, I would, I would encourage you to try it out, basically, so, um, and yeah, if you've got an Android phone, I think it's, like, awesome, like, to install Termux, and then, um, PKG install Python and Jupyter, yeah, Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab. Yeah, I wonder. So, uh, how many minutes we got now? Five. So my my watch is running Jupiter Lab now. So this is like very winging it, but uh, nah, I'm not going to do it because it take ages to SSH into it. Um, yeah, I was going to get my watch to sport to talk. Um, so well, I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not a Vim user. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something, but um, I I do know that you can change the keyboard shortcuts. But maybe that's too specific to. Oh, and it doesn't show it there. Maybe that's too. In Jupyter Notebook, you can change the keyboard shortcuts. So I'm not. I'm not sure if that's. But it's, maybe there's a really specific to Jupyter. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there is some. Uh, way and if there isn't, remember that you can still open a, a, a terminal from Jupyter, and then you can you could edit your files within Vim there. So that's kind of maybe better because you could use whatever version of Vim, and you don't have to worry about your your Vim configuration being different, right? And and oh yeah. Uh, and we said that the name um, uh, originally it was um, it supported Python, Julia, and R. Yeah. Um, so is it is it straightforward to sure. to run Julia, um, for example? Uh, I'm just gonna. Wasn't having much luck getting back to my home, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you from the the notebook version. Yeah. So. Um, where is it? So I don't have them installed here, but um, yeah, so you you can install uh, different uh, inter like plugins for different languages here, and they would like you'd have a uh, you can select them from from here, but I don't have them installed. So and you, it also includes like you can have different versions of Python, which is quite handy. Yeah, and in, in fact, there's um, I think there's some magic for Ruby that you can run Ruby code. So, ooh, red. Uh, okay, so I think you can run Ruby like this. Oh. Is this valid Ruby? Right. No. <laughs> uh, who's a Ruby person? Like, but okay, there, I know there's some magic that you can uh, run Ruby uh, code within a cell, like just um, uh, using just the magics. Uh, 
Is it a yeah, I'm, I didn't do Ruby, so I'm, I'm lost there. But um, R and Judy, I think you've got similar things. Any more questions? Well then, uh, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, so, yeah, I yeah, hope you enjoyed the talk and <laughs> try it out. <laughs>